So what's the first thing that comes to your mind when you look at this chart? You're seeing a high, then you're seeing a low, then you're seeing a lower high, a lower low, a lower high, right? So then you start connecting the dots and it's a, basically it's a downtrend. So obviously in your mind, you're thinking this is a bearish chart. Then if you zoom out just a bit, you can see that the actual overall trend is up. And this is just a slight pullback in the overall trend. A common question that I get asked all the time is what time frame do I use? When I tell people that I use all time frames, people are usually a little confused with that answer. Today I'm going to explain exactly what it is that I mean when I say that by introducing you guys to the top down analysis. This is a very basic skill that you must incorporate into your trading habits to be able to see the big picture be a more consistent winning trader and be able to quickly look through charts, identify supporting resistance zones, identify trends and identify possible trade setups very, very quickly. So if you're looking to become a better trader, this is a good place to start. Let's dive right in. Hey, what's up? Jay here and welcome to Bitcoin Daily, bringing you guys the best tips, tutorials and ideas to help you guys become profitable and successful traders. The goal of this channel is to empower you guys with the resources and knowledge to help you get to that next level. So make sure to subscribe, hit that like button and turn on that bell notification so that you're notified as soon as we post videos five times a week. So what exactly is a top down analysis? A top down analysis is used to refer to doing trend analysis on longer time frames before narrowing down to smaller time frames. So if you look at this chart, you can see this chart. We're currently looking at the one month chart. If we were to go to the, let's say daily chart, it looks completely different, right? So basically the whole idea here is to get a more comprehensive view of the price action by moving from wider time frames to smaller time frames. When doing a technical analysis, the first thing I always do is look at the daily, weekly, and monthly charts to determine the overall long-term trend and as well as identify more long-term support and resistance levels before moving into a closer and smaller time frame. So for example, if Bitcoin is bullish on the daily chart and I'm seeing bullish momentum on the hourly chart, then I might zoom into the 15 minute or five minute chart to look for some more precise entries. So let's start from the top. We're looking at Bitcoin currently and we're going to zoom out all the way to the one month candle. So this is the one month time frame. Every single candlestick here represents exactly one month. So we can see as far back as 2017 and even further back to 2015. It gives us an overview on exactly what's gone on throughout all these years since 2015 all the way up to 2017 crazy crazy bull run to 20k then it tells us a story about the bear market where we went down from 20,000 all the way down to a low of around three thousand dollars and then finally it takes us back up from that three thousand dollars to about fifteen thousand in 2019 then back down to three thousand dollars again during the pandemic on march of last year then as you can see in this story we went from the bottom of three thousand dollars and rose like a phoenix from the ashes and went all the way up to new all-time highs of today which are which is in the fifty thousand dollar range so this is always how we like to start off our technical analysis when looking over different cryptos different altcoins it could be stocks it doesn't matter what it is this is the best way to start looking at a stock especially or crypto especially if you're not familiar with it you want to always know the overall trend and with the overall story because you want you want to see the big picture to then zoom in and make better decisions. Remember that technical analysis and trading is all about information. The more information you have, the better decisions that you can make. So that's why you start at the top and work your way down because you wanna have all the information. You wanna gather as much information as possible before risking your hard earned money. So let's go ahead and mark some supporting resistance levels here. So I already marked the first one, which is this bottom one, which is right around that 3000 level. 
as you can see, if we zoom in here, you will see that that's basically was the bottom here during this bear market in 2018 and 19. And when we had the dump of uh, the pandemic, it also bottomed out at the same exact price. Another thing to note, remember that technical analysis is never ever exact numbers. It's always zones. So that's why when, when you see this and you see this, even though they're not the same exact price, it doesn't matter. It's in the same zone and that's what matters. So what else do you guys see here that could be a uh, support resistance? So one that we see right off the bat is this area right here. As you guys can see, it kind of held up there for a while, right around this 6,000 area. And you see that it also tested it right here. So this would be a good area to add another support level there. All right, if we continue looking at the chart, another good spot is gonna be, guess where, right around here. As you can see, there's a lot of price action there, a lot of price action there. And that's right at that 10,000 level, which is also a psychological level. So it's definitely a support and resistance level since there's a lot of price action there. So we can go ahead and mark that area. The next spot I'm seeing uh, some price action is right here. You see right here and you see right here, right? So that could also be another area of interest. So we're gonna go ahead and mark it right at that, around that 20, 12,000 mark. And the final area is gonna be from the 2017 where the candles basically closed and opened. Um, as you can see, we also had price action at that same level. And again, price action at the same level. So that's enough for us to call it another support and resistance level and right at that 14K range. Of course, we're gonna uh, go ahead and do this all time, the previous all time high here, which you can see here, there was a lot of uh, price action in that area. So we can definitely say that would be a support and resistance zone. So if we go up higher now, more into what's been going on lately, you can see here, there was a lot of price action between these two months, right at that 30K range. So we're gonna go ahead and mark that 30K range as a support and resistance area as well. And then finally, as you guys know, we just hit 50K today. And as you guys will know, 50K is gonna be a very big part of crypto um, moving forward. So I'm gonna go ahead and mark that $50,000 area as a support and resistance area as well. All right, so we started with a blank chart and now just by looking at the monthly chart and overall trend, we can tell the very important areas here as we were able to mark some very important points of interest where there was a lot of price action. So if there's any retracements or any uh, trades that we're taking, we just kind of look for the big support and resistance areas in the overall one month chart time frame to make better decisions when we we zoom in another thing you can do as well is draw a Fibonacci retracement tool from the bottom from the basically the start of the run um, to the top of the run so what we're gonna do we're gonna go ahead and do it from down here which is March during the pandemic up to the top of that run now that gives you extra supports and resistance as you guys can see right here 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 those are all different levels where there's going to be price action usually or there's been already price action so you can see here at this exact spot there was a close of the candle and an open of the candle so there was a lot of there was a lot of volume a lot of things going on in that area you can see here it looks like this played as a support there and you can see here this one's actually in line with this other resistance that we spoke about so now we're ready to go on to our weekly time frame so what i like to do once i start zooming in get these levels that are further away and that are not uh, very important right now and just kind of make them as small as possible so that they don't distract you too much. You can even fade it out so that the, uh, lower the opacity on it so that again, it does not pop out too much on the chart because you kind of, you always wanna to try to keep a clean chart overall. All right, now we're a lot more zoomed in so you can kind of get a better idea of exactly what's been going on on the weekly chart. So after the monthly, you zoom into the weekly. Usually we look for important levels and we try to point those levels out the same way we try to make sure that the levels that we use for our Fibonacci and um, you know the other ones that we posted, which we wanna make sure that they make sense. So as you guys can see here, both the Fibonacci and one of our support areas are there 
So this level definitely makes a lot, a lot of sense here. There is a whole lot of price action. So that's definitely a very important level to use when you're looking for a trade. This would be a perfect level, a perfect area to enter a support entry there. Then obviously here, uh, this was also a very important level. You can see the Fibonacci retracement level there. So this was definitely a strong resistance there. And now we couldn't see it on the monthly chart, but we can see it now in the weekly chart. And once we break out of a resistance like we did here, that resistance gets flipped into a support. So if we were to, for some reason, uh, get traced back down over here, this would be a good entry uh, as, a, as a support entry to bounce back up. And then as you can see towards the top here, um, we're obviously at a big resistance here. So what you would be looking if you're looking to enter a trade up here, you kind of want to enter a trade above this area, right? You don't want to enter a trade so close to this. That's why any trades, you know, within this area right here are a lot riskier because you're trading at the top of the resistance, right? So you wanna trade once we get a breakout above the resistance, kind of like we did right here with that candle. All right, so now we're looking at the daily time frame. We've zoomed in yet again. And again, you can see um, how we got rejected there, how we had the support there, how we had rejection there again before finally getting this breakout, um, which is what's led us now to this new resistance area there. Now, what the daily chart also shows us is better um, patterns, right? So here you can kind of see that this is like this is a bull flag here, right? So we're kind of just grinding up between these levels as soon as we're just consolidating while kind of ascending up with this support and resistance that are both ascending. So now we can start taking small, you know, patterns like this to look for trades but we're keeping in mind the long-term resistance, long-term uh, supports. Um, so for every trade we're taking, we're keeping in mind, even though now we're zoomed into the daily and, and kind of looking for daily patterns to trade, we're keeping in mind what the long-term weekly and month support and resistances are to find the highest probable trades possible. So for example, right now, a high probability trade would be a breakout above the current highs, but you have to be careful because it there will be a lot of fake outs, there, there will be a lot of sellers at the 50K range because it's a very big resistance level. But on the other side of that, once we do break out of there, it's gonna be a big, big move. Now, if we get pushed back, then we're looking back at different areas where history showed us that will be big, strong support areas, right? So both of these areas here would be a good support to enter if we were to drop back down, right? So let's go ahead and draw now a kind of a trend line here for on the daily chart, right? Just kind of to have an idea of what we're looking at. We're also drawing a trend line on the top of this pattern. And now we're going to zoom into the four hour chart. So notice how we continue to gather more and more information and then continue to zoom in to have a better idea of a trade setup that we can possibly come across. So now some possible trade setups would be on this ascending trend line, right? Which is going up. As you can see, it's bounced there, it's bounced there, and it could possibly bounce here if we get rejected back down here from where we currently are. You can also see that this area right here where it got rejected is right at the top of this current pattern that it's trading within. So a good idea would have been selling up here and then looking to buy back in down here. So currently we're almost right at the bottom here. So that level is right around that 48K area. So automatically we're looking at 48,000 as a possible support entry. We'd be looking to ride that 48,000 uh, back up to the kind of the top of this range. Uh, we'd obviously, we'd definitely be taking profits starting at 50K, but we can look to possibly go as high as 51 as it did previously. Now we're zoomed into the hourly chart and you can see how much more information it gives us on an hour to hour basis. So now we're really zoomed in. We, we know what's going on overall and now we can start looking for trade setups here, as you can see. So you see that that 48K range is where we got that bounce. You'll see that over here, there was a price action 
There was a whole lot of price action here at 48 as well. And we had a big rejection there as well. So 48,000 is definitely a point of interest that you can use to enter a trade. Now that we've seen the whole picture, we know what the overall trend is doing and we have an idea and we've zoomed in to see where we can take an entry with this information that we've gathered. All right, guys. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and were able to understand exactly what I was trying to explain. The whole idea of this is to start at the top bigger time frame so you can see the entire picture. Then you start zooming in, taking in information from each each of the different time frames. And the more information that you have available for yourself, then the, the better that you can predict or try to set up a trade that makes sense and has the highest probability possible. So that is the whole idea of a top down analysis. Learning this will make reading charts a whole lot easier. Basically, I just look at the chart. I open up charts and I look at them for about five minutes and I can tell you know where the trade setups will be and if there's any possible trade setup at the moment just by doing a top-down analysis you know within five minutes and that's basically it because i've already set up the monthly supporting resistance levels i've set up the weekly levels and then when i go into the daily and four hour charts everything's already set up i just gotta look at it see if it's at any of those points that of interest that i want to take a trade in if not then i move into the next one if there is a setup then i go ahead and start looking at a, uh, setting up a plan to enter a trade there. So that's pretty much it, guys. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you found value in this content, go ahead and subscribe to the channel, guys. Make sure to hit that like button as well and turn on those post notifications. If you guys have any questions about this, I know it could be a little confusing when first trying to take it in because it's a lot of information. But if you have any questions about anything on this video, drop it in the comments and I will do my best to reply to all of you with the proper answers. Thank you guys so much. As always, I will see you tomorrow. Peace and love.